Okay, good morning. good morning. Thank you for being here. I'm going to talk a little bit today, at least I think I am, I'm going to talk about science of mind and the idea of success. One of my favorite chapters in the textbook is the chapter on principles of successful living. I make sure I read that at least once a year. Uh, so that's today, here you are. Uh, so I'll start with something from Corinthians in the New Testament. It says, what no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. So that's very encouraging. And then Emerson said, to the poet, to the philosopher, to the saint, all things are friendly and sacred, all events profitable, all days holy, all beings divine. So I, I, I like that. That works for me. Like, yeah, that sounds kind of like science of mind. We believe that Ernest Holmes got the philosophical aspect of science of mind very much from uh, the influence of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Now, in uh, Exodus, though, in the Old Testament, in the fifth chapter, there is the story of Moses and his brother going to the Pharaoh saying, uh, the God of Israel says, let my people go. And Pharaoh's response to that is essentially, how dare you even ask? I'm the Pharaoh. You're my slave workforce. Why would I ever let you go? In fact, because you were audacious enough to ask, I'm going to punish you. What their job was is they were making bricks. And to make bricks, they needed straw. And Pharaoh said, I will no longer supply the straw. You still have to produce the same number of bricks, but you've got to find the straw in your own time, is essentially what happened. So it, it, that seemed like an impossible, impossible task. How could they possibly make bricks without the straw? Well, you know, what happens is Jehovah's response was, go work. There will be no straw, but you will ab be able to produce the exact number of bricks the Pharaoh requires. And so this is, uh, I think, a, an illustration of working with spiritual law. They could accomplish something that seemed impossible. So one of the things that we come to notice about the idea of success is that a way to pray around that is uh, that for success not to come faster than you are able to handle it with good consciousness. You know? uh, so you know, uh, the wisdom of God is everywhere. Uh, and somebody who I have uh, always loved was Rosalind Russell. And Rosalind Russell, like all of us, contains some of the wisdom of God. And here's what she said. She said, flops are a part of life's menu. And I've never been a girl to miss out on any of the courses. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so another way is uh, this Yiddish proverb that says, he that lies on the ground cannot fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Important to know is that science of mind is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It does not promise something for nothing. Right? It does promise to the one who will comply with its teachings that, they shall, that that person shall be able to bring about greater possibilities and happier conditions into their life experience. So we do not teach that you can get whatever you want, because if we did, that would certainly be disastrous for some people. Because most of us would want things that would interfere with the well-being of someone else. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, my God, I want their job. I want their house. I want their husband. I want their wife. I want them, you know, that interferes with somebody else's existence. But science of mind does teach us that it is entirely possible through mental treatment and through right thought and belief to greatly influence our environment, its reaction to us, the situations we meet, and the conditions that we contact. We say, how? Well, part of this, part of this is what we focus on, because the principle is that what we focus on increases. So as students of science of mind, what we do is we look away from conditions that now exist while accepting better ones. We accept intellectually, but also it has to be subjective. And if we comply with the law, the law complies with us. What law are we talking about? The basic law of consciousness, the law of the universe that says what you give out comes back. So we cannot um, focus, think, imagine, talk, limitation, and demonstrate a greater good. We can't focus on, think, imagine, talk, sickness, and think that we're going to be healthy. Right? Humans are filled with limitless potential. I believe that is so for every single person. We are filled right now with limitless potential. But we can only experience what we can conceive because we attract to us that which is most like our thought. So we become more in consciousness. That's what we do. We become more in consciousness if we desire to draw a greater good into our lives. 
One say, well, how do I pray for that? Well, true prayer is thy will be done. Right? And so now here's where it gets interesting. We have to have the faith that the will of God for us is good. And I hope you believe that. I do. The will of God for each and every one of us is good. That's how we can say thy will be done. Because God doesn't want anything for any of us that isn't for our highest and greatest good, that isn't for our highest and greatest expression of life. So we have faith that the will of God for us is good. And that will, Ernest teaches us in the textbook, is everything that expresses life without hurt. Anything that will enable us, that will enable us to express greater life, greater happiness, and greater peace, greater power, so long as it does not hurt anyone, must be the will of God for us. Hmm? So, you know, people, people always get stuck on what other people are going to think, though. Well, others cannot possibly know what's right or wrong for us because two things. One, that's all about their judgment, and two, it's based on their past experience. Hmm? So the criteria is, I think, does this thing I wish to do express more life, more happiness, more peace to myself, and at the same time harm no one? And if it does, then it's the right thing. See, because the spiritual being within us is already a success. God sees you right now as a success. But where is your faith in this? If God sees me as a success, where is my faith in this process? So long ago, St. Ignatius said, faith is to believe what you do not yet see. The reward for this faith is to see what you believe. Right? Faith is to believe what you do not see, and the reward for this faith is to see what you believe. So, you know, in the West, our model of success seems to be, um, our, our model is a success-oriented model. It's often defined as the acquisition of things or the achievement of status, right? And so many, most, believe that, you know, success is measured by the things we can see or covet. You know, if I have this, if I can get that, right? So we may say, well, people who have reached their goals are successful. Now, a lot of people would agree that people who have reached their goals are successful, but people who haven't aren't. So, and people think, you know, well, education, money, and power seem to be attributes of this definition of success. And lack of them and a lack of ambition seem to be signs of not success. Well, note that all measures of success on this model are external to the self, to the spiritual you. Right? So it may be that our self-esteem is dependent on people and things outside of ourselves. So the problem with that is externals are always changing. You know, the people outside of us, they're always changing. They're growing too. So some people seem to do all the right things. They follow the formula. They study hard. They work hard. They meet the right people, but they still don't have success. They don't quite make it, whatever that is, all, because all that was just external doing. What about the consciousness? What about the consciousness that's included that is actually the foundation? Now, perhaps a more Eastern approach, and I think science of mind is very much a balance of Western and Eastern. A more Eastern approach is being. Being doesn't define success. It's implied. You are successful in your being, right? Where you are at this moment is your success. You have succeeded. You are. That is enough. So the only way to measure success on this model is how you feel about yourself. And so I think what's really interesting about this is rather than looking to outside of myself to see how I'm doing, at the end of the day, what I get to ask myself is, did I show up in my life as the person I wanted to be today? Was I the kind of person? Was I the quality of person? Did I bring the quality of consciousness, the quality of love to the people that I interacted with? Did I show up in the world as the kind of person I wanted to be? Because for me, that is a success, if we can say yes to that that today I showed up like the kind of person I say I want to be. Um, if you love yourself, especially when the world around you seems to be falling apart, I would also say, yes, you're a success, right? If you do not love yourself, you're not a failure, you've just not learned to love yourself. That's that. So this definition of success uh, is internal and I think in our control. You get to call it success or not. Now, I believe what is so for everyone is you can be a success. You can control how successful you are. You learn to be successful in the only way that ultimately counts, and that is to the most important person in your life, which, of course, is you. Now, I think we have the capacity to make our life better. Everybody does. It's entirely up to us. 
So yesterday, I was getting off the freeway, and, um, and I had a moment there. And there was a guy I see, uh, oh, well, every week I see this fellow there. Uh, and the appearance is that he's homeless. I suspect he's a veteran because he has um, a prosthesis for one leg. Uh, and of course, he's there with a dog, which just brings me to my knees every time I see him with a dog uh, at the off-ramp. And so um, probably over the last couple of months, uh, I've started to get to know him a little bit, you know, because you have time when you're at the light. You know? It's an interesting thing. When you want the light to change quickly, it doesn't. And when you want the light to not change because you're maybe engaged with somebody, it seems to change quickly. So anyway, um, yesterday I rolled down the window and gave him something and I was talking to him. And he says to me, he says, so what do you do? And I said, I'm a minister of a church. How about you? And he said, well, nothing right now. And, uh, and he said, so... Uh, you spend all your time fighting the devil? <laughs> now, I know the light's going to change. I have only a few seconds here. <laughs> and so I said, I find that the devil I have to fight against is my own negative thinking. And he kind of looked at me, looked at me again, and he thought, I'm sure he was thinking, and they think I'm crazy? Right? <laughs> and then the light turned, and I said, OK, we'll see you later. God bless you. And he went, hey, thanks, man. Thanks very much. And then uh, I did uh, the visit I was doing. And, and when I was actually getting back on the freeway from my visit, I saw him. He was heading back to he and his dog to wherever they were headed. Um, but you know, it's so interesting to me because I really believe that inherent within every person, we have the capacity to make our life better. And it's entirely up to us. Because who else would know what you want or need? You know, who else would know what you deeply love? Who else would know what is fulfilling to you? You know, I think because we don't want to be waiting for someone else to come along and make it all better. If anything is going to get better, it will because, be because you did something about it. That's how things get better. That's what we teach. Right? And so you were put in the center of your life to take charge of it. Other people are just essentially casual observers. And so their negative comments have no more to do with you. you know, they actually have more to do with them than with you. And this is something I have to remind myself, that when people generously spew their negativity, that's more about them than it is about me. You know? um, other people, like I say, they just get to be observers. But you know, um, I think what we're after is to shape our life following our own instincts, our own inclinations, our own preferences. You make your life better, and, and, and you be the judge of what you get to be the judge of what better means, not somebody else's idea of success. So I think that you know one of the secrets of life is that there is no secret to life. It's it, it's all hard work. And I, now, as soon as I say that, somebody goes, "Well, that seems really negative to me." And it's like, no, it's not. It's not. Everything takes energy. Everything takes energy. If your life is a train wreck, it takes energy to maintain that to maintain that train wreck. You know what? <laughs> it is. Right? But if your life is good, it also takes energy to make your life good. And if your life is incredible, it takes energy to make your life incredible. So it all takes energy. The secret of life is there's no secret. It's hard work. Right? So I think what we're in the process of learning is that, yeah, there's always the risk of rejection to get what you want. There's always the possibility that we say, oh, I failed. You know? But remember, your long-term goals where you're headed is what we have to remember during a short-term problem. Hmm? You know, and, and, and what I think is so important is that we have to stop imagining negative things. You know, to not allow others to make you feel like, like a failure, you know, and stop uh, doing that to yourself. The conscious thing is to wish everyone, everywhere success. Um, in the Abundance Workshop I just taught, 
Catherine Ponder had this wonderful affirmation. She said that when we see people, we should say, I bless you with the rich increase of God's almighty good. And so I put that on a little um, index card, and I have it on the visor of, of my car. So, so I rem I'm remembering now, when I see people on the street, you know, that I say, oh, I bless you with a rich increase of God's almighty good. I bless you with a rich, rich increase of God's almighty good, which is so much better than thinking lots of other thoughts, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It really is, because the conscious thing is to wish everyone success, because there's infinite success in God. There is enough for everybody, really, and I don't know why we don't always do this, because the principle is what you wish for another person is what you're claiming for yourself in the universal mind. You're telling the universe, this is what I'm about, wishing everybody an abundant, healthy, happy, loving life. You know, if we're not sure of ourselves, if we don't like us, it's particularly hard to wish other people well, is what I find. When we feel down about ourselves, it's easier to hear about someone else's misfortunes than it is their successes. So maybe because our friends are like us, their successes make us question ourselves, and we say, oh, well, why not me? Right? I think that's a very human response, but it's not very divine. You know, nothing alienates people like success. That's an old saying. You know, that jealousy is ugly, you know, because it's always a belief in lack. And often when people are successful, they discover it's lonely at the top, right? You, because why? Because you leave people behind you know, when, when you grow. Hmm? So they need to stop looking down at what they've left behind and actually consider the possibility that I should be on a different ladder. You know? So how do we respond to others who get what they want? I hope our response, because I think this is the more conscious way to be, is how wonderful, you, how wonderful for you. Nobody deserves it more than you. That's fantastic, good for you. Now they're an example of what's possible for us when we take that attitude. Another idea I, I want to share is to not be afraid to make mistakes. And I believe now, you know, we have um, so much media coverage that we are afraid to make any kind of mistake. But that's really where we learn. Like I say all the time, where does good judgment come from? Bad judgment, unfortunately. You know, so your success in life, I don't think we learn as much from success as we do from other experiences. Because life is always changing. And your success could have been luck, although I don't really believe in luck. I believe it was consciousness. That you are uh, sure to fail if you only try to imitate old successes and never risk enough to make mistakes. See, because I think your biggest successes evolve through your failures. You can learn from the mistakes of others, but you only grow through making your own. I know that. I know that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is a terrible example, but because we're close, I will share it anyway. Um, <laughs> my parents always said to us growing up, one, don't drink. Two, don't mix if you drink. You all, everybody knows what that means, don't mix, right? <laughs> That means don't mix beer and wine, don't mix wine and hard alcohol, whatever. whatever. And um, I remember as a teenager having to have that experience for myself <laughs> to learn what, a, what profound truth was implied in that message. You know, uh, now I am sure probably somewhere along the line my parents had also experienced that which is why they were so willing to share from their experience, don't ever mix. And um, my siblings and I all had to go down that road. I don't know why we didn't trust them on that. We trusted them on so many other things, you know? But then once we did, it's like, oh my God, they know what they're talking about. I will never do that again. See, because you, it, it's, it's, you know, from our mistakes, you know, they teach us to have confidence in in the areas where we're strong, and to have a healthy respect for, for our humanness. Um, your mistakes make you accessible to yourself. It's easier to review your life and make a powerful change during a mistake than it is. It's hard to make a change during a success, right? So while a mistake can be defeating, it also reconnects you to your promise to yourself. You know, because you want the people you love the most when? When they leave you. Right? You know, when they're not around. You want the work situation the most when it's no longer your work situation. You know, I, I, when you're disappointed, it seems like your goals become more clear. It's a powerful time to pay attention. 
you know, in disappointment, say, wow, what is it that I really, really want to create? What is it that I want to embrace? What is it that I want to bring into my life? So yes, absolutely, we have to make our own mistakes on the road to our own goals. So the idea is to loosen up and take a chance. And yes, you run the risk of growing again. Oh my gosh, I'm on the grow. How horrible. I'm always growing. But the mistakes you make could just be the new beginning that you've been looking for. Because, you know, success is liking how you feel about what you do with your life energy. Do you like what you're putting your life energy into? Hmm? I hope you do. I really do. Because any success makes you feel successful when you accept yourself. When you don't, nothing makes a difference. Right? So this is why I say that I think the foundation of success is liking who you are as a person who shows up in your life. Right? Because without that, nothing added on top of that uh, is going to make any kind of difference. You know, where your passion lies, there lies your success. So do your best at what makes you happy. Right? And true success, I think, is mastery over yourself. I will love me wherever I am on the journey. And sometimes I feel like I'm on top on the journey, and sometimes I feel like I'm absolutely on the bottom, below the bottom. I'm below, I'm, whatever that room is below the bottom room, that's where I feel sometimes, you know. So success, you know, it's a journey. It's not a destination. You know, and happiness, I think, is to be found along the way, not at the end of the road, as we have so often told ourselves, you know, for, for, because then, then the journey is over, and it's too late. Oh, great, I found it. Boom, game over. You know, what's that? So the time, the time to enjoy, the time for happiness, the time to recognize how blessed we are, how good it is, is today, not tomorrow. You know, accept that right now you are a great success at being you. That's something we can work with. Let's pray. Thank you. So let me just take a moment to turn our attention inward now and remember that right here where we are, God is that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite loving presence. In fact, that spirit of God within us is the most true, real thing about us. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God and our connection with each other on the unseen side of life, I speak the word that deeply, deeply within our own body, mind, and soul, I know for each and every one of us that we are a success at being us that we are showing up in life as the people we desire to be with the consciousness we desire to experience and express. I know for each and every one of us that the path ahead is light, not dark. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we hold near and dear. And we know that right where they are, God is present, that God's spirit surrounds them and fulfills them, meets their needs, heals them, we let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So we just imagine an energy of love and light and blessing emanating out from us, from our sanctuary, and spreading all over Los Angeles, and from Los Angeles, all over the United States, and from the United States, all over the world, touching all people everywhere with an energy of light and love and healing and blessing and peace. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm, I know, I'm absolutely convinced that we are blessed by being together today, that we are raised up in consciousness, that we are healed, that we let go of something that does not serve us anymore. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say... Amen.